Hey guys, it's Ian with ianbluemusic.com. Today we're going to be looking at the plugin Waves Tune. Okay, so first things first, this is going to be done in Logic, but this goes for any uh, FL Studio, uh, Pro Tools, whatever you're using, Ableton, this is going to be how this plugin works, but I'm just using it in Logic today, so don't get turned off by that. Um, I'm going to do a pretty quick overview, but I'm going to try to get into all the details of how this software works. Uh, but first things first, this is more like a Melodyne. Um, if you know what that software is, it's less like uh, Antares Auto-Tune. It's not automatic. It's not super fast. It's meant to go in and specifically draw notes. This is great for uh, singers that maybe aren't very good or maybe like rappers where it's specific melodies that you're going for, but they can't really hit it with um, an Auto-Tune or uh, the Waves Tune real time, which is the Waves version of Auto-Tune more or less. So uh, first things first, set your range. The way you're going to get the audio into this is by just clicking play and it'll automatically sense it. But you want to set your range first so you know which notes it's going for. Um, I know that this one is a bass, but you can see it change. Um, so the alto is a little higher, but and et cetera. But we're going to do bass and then let's just go ahead and hit it. I'm going to start a little bit before. Back to me. You don't got to act so bad to me. I would never tell you I don't want you. I would never say it because it's not true. Nah. So just run right back to me. How you do me cold so casually? Why you trying to act like I don't want you? You're the only one that I can't lose. When it's me and you, you know we can't lose. All right, so that's the hook. We've got our vocals in there. Um, great. So now let's get to editing. The first thing I want to do is set a scale. I know that this is in C sharp minor, so you can set all that down here. Um, then click select all. The keyboard shortcuts for your DAW won't work in here, so you have to do the undo, redo, select all buttons. You just have to click into it. Um, then click apply, and that's going to adjust everything to the right to scale. The next thing I like to mess with is just doing a hard tune, turning the speed all the way down. Turn the speed all the way down and the note transition all the way down. And then you're going to see exactly which notes. Um, and then if I play it. Back to me. You don't gotta act so bad to me. It doesn't sound bad, but I want it to sound a little bit more natural. I just do this first just so I can see what notes are going wrong and how to adjust them. And then we move on from there. So the next thing I mess with is tolerance. Um, the lower the tolerance basically is saying if a note is even remotely bad, then it's going to drop it to a new note. Um, for instance, um, let me see what's a good one. Yeah, let's do this first note here. The green line represents what it's tuned to. The yellow line is the original tuning. So you can see it's the wave goes up and down. It basically gets tuned down to this um, B here. It goes from the C sharp to a B, but I know that this is just one note. It's just one note that I wanted to tune to. I've got the tolerance turned all the way up, but see when it starts off, it's automatically at 20. And then you can see the tuner saying, oh, well, you, the note went down here, so we're going to make it go down to a B for a second, then you come up. But I know that's not a walk down. I know that it's, it's supposed to be one note. It's just a bad vocal performance. So I'll just turn that up on the tolerance until that gets flattened out. And you can flatten things out too much. You can um, lose walk downs and you can miss in between notes. Um, but here we got to 70. And I think based on what I know about this, um, that's actually going to work for the rest of the track. So that flattens out a lot of the little um, mistakes right off the bat. Back to me. You don't got to act so bad to me. I would never tell you I don't want you. I would never say it because it's not true. All right. So... Ultimately, a good vocal performance is going to be better than anything here, but we don't always have that as a luxury. So um, let's go ahead. Understand that you really need to get into editing this by hand. So I'm going to show you all the editing tools here. Um, this is going to drag the box that the uh, note is in. I've got them all selected here. Let me click out, and then I can just drag this down. So I could see what it sounds like if I wanted that note sung as a uh, note lower. Back to me. You don't got Doesn't sound bad, I think. Maybe this one. Back to me. 
It actually sounds kind of cool. It sounds digital, but it works. So you can drag the note around. The next thing is going to be the scissors. You could chop that note up and say, well, I want it to be a walk down. So I'm going to have that first part and you can see where the scale is. The red dots indicate that that's an illegal note or outside of the C sharp minor scale, but these are both legal. So it should sound pretty good. Let's listen to that. To me. Actually, it doesn't sound super bad. What if we go like this too? To me. You don't go so that's fun. You can mess around with the way a melody is, um, get a little bit of experimental with it, or just uh, correct a false note. So that's that. There's the, the dragging function there, the scissors, the pencil. I don't use this very much, but you can essentially literally drag which note you want in. So I want some vibrato. It doesn't sound very good. I very rarely use that. Next is going to be the magnifying glass. You can zoom in or uh, I technically don't know how to zoom out with the magnifying glass, but you get the idea. This drags the actual... It doesn't drag the box. It just drags the tuning. So if I click in the middle of this note, you can see... Um, oh, it's not doing it. If I click in the middle of this note, I can just drag it. And it's not even locking into any particular note. It's just kind of freeform here. Back to me. You don't um, so it, I don't use this very often, but it could be a good tool depending on your workflow. You can drag the ends to give it an angle. That's a pretty cool feature if you wanted a little bit of a slide either end oops Back to me. um i don't know when you would use that the glue joins one note to the next so you can see this note goes down and then it goes drops down to this note here the glue is just saying yeah we're going to make that one box and we're going to bring that tuning up so there you go it's one box i can actually connect it to the next one too uh, maybe i can nope i can't uh it's a little finicky on how that works this is uh, plugin's a little bit old, but you can see it flattens out, so I don't have to deal with that drop down. Uh, to me. You don't gotta act so actually, sounds pretty good. Uh, the next tool is this line drawing function, and this is pretty similar to the pencil, but you just you're drawing two points, um, so it's a little bit more forgiving. If I wanted to say pitch up at the end or pitch down, actually, let's try this. Back to me. You don't gotta let's try even more. Um, where I would really use this is notes like this I was noticing earlier where there's this hard tune maybe a little earlier I don't really like that I want a little bit of a softer bend so I can just give it that little bend with that line so this is really meticulous right you really have to get in here um, it's not super automatic obviously the vocals don't sound too bad right now but really getting them exactly how you want you got to get in and get really edity with it it's a little bit of an owl city kind of slide not super noticeable though the hand you can click that that just drags around the thing so that's the editing tools now some of the other uh, these three knobs down here are really going to set how strong the tuning is. Once you get all your notes right, I keep it as the hard tuned as possible just so I can hear what notes it thinks it's doing and make some necessary adjustments and I can flatten some things out. Um, say like that. I know that's not supposed to be that way. So I would never say it because it's not true. Doesn't sound too bad. But now that I've got it sounding decent, let's adjust it. Um, all these controls so that we're getting a natural sounding tune. So I'm going to reset them down to zero and then let's start from there. Want you. And I'll go back to the beginning of the hook here. And then I can say the speed is essentially how quickly it's jumping to the tune. So a low speed, it's basically instantaneously on tune almost robotic, but I turn it up to 10 milliseconds and you can see, well, it takes a second for it to catch up in some of these places. Um, it's just like a little bit less um, robotic, a little bit less of a hard tune. Back to me. You don't gotta act so bad to me. I would never tell you I don't want you. So it doesn't sound too bad. Uh, it sounds a little bit more natural. I want to turn that back down to zero so you can see this next part. Note transition is essentially rounding off all these corners. So there's a transition of a note right here but it's zero time to get from one note to the next note. It's just instantaneous. But if we turn up note transition, we can see all these corners start to flatten out, right? 
back to me You don't gotta act so bad to me I would never tell you I don't want you I would never say it cause it's not true So, turn that back down to zero That gives you an idea of what that knob does And then the last thing is ratio This is more or less a wet, dry knob Original is zero And you're basically back to the original recording Back to me You don't gotta act so bad to me Yikes so we'll turn that up to say 90. So we're not fully tuned, but we're almost all the way. Uh, it's like a wet dry, so almost 100% wet, but leaving a little bit of room for some character and some vocal imperfections. Back to me, you don't gotta act so bad to me. I would never tell you I don't want you. I would so these three knobs, you're gonna use them to decide how natural you want this tuning to sound and you'll usually use based on those descriptions you can kind of get an idea uh, and based on the vocal performance use a combination of those um, speed and ratio actually act pretty similarly but their functions a little bit different but i usually use a combination of all three and i like a hard tune but i want a little bit of a natural sound to it so what if we do something like this we give it a seven on the note transition maybe an eight and a five on the speed let's see what we sound like back to me you don't gotta act so bad to me i would never tell you i don't want you i would never say it because it's not true no. so just run right back to me that sounds pretty good back to me now the one thing i will notice is that on these long notes, these imperfections sound okay, but on some of these quick notes, I really do want them to be pretty tight. So if I go back to this selector tool right here and I just grab those two notes, then I can individually affect those speed and the note transition for those notes, and I'll turn the ratio up. I really want those to be really defined notes. So I'm leaving a little bit of imperfection, but for the most part, uh, it's pretty hard tuned right at those two notes there. Back to me. You don't gotta act so bad to me. I would never tell you I don't want you. All right, so that gets into pretty much everything about this plugin. Uh, the last thing I will touch on is this vibrato here. Uh, the natural is more or less allowing natural vibrato, but it's really overrided by these tools here. Uh, these three knobs so uh, what i will tell you about is the synth vibrato and this is an artificial vibrato that it adds to notes so you can do it across the whole thing but really most music uh, notes you really only have vibrato on the long notes this is the longest note i see so if i skip forward in the track a little bit now i can add this synth vibrato in so i've got the note selected i'll click on and then i'll just click Pretty high depth to give you an idea. So that's with a lot of vibrato. That definitely doesn't sound natural. Uh, first off, I want it a lot quicker. I want a really tight, almost like a Post Malone vibrato. And also, I don't want the whole note. So pre-delay is saying how long it takes before the vibrato starts. And then attack is saying how long it takes to go from no vibrato to vibrato. So it just kind of softens that knee a little bit there so i don't want it quite so distinct i was just using that to exaggerate but if we turn it down let's see what that sounds like not quite enough doesn't sound too bad and i could spend more time getting into that really detailed but uh you get the general idea so that's the overview waves tune it's great for uh, really bad singers or if you really just want to do a really fine tune on what a vocal performance um, sounds like you can get really into all these tools and editing things individually it's a little bit of an older software so it's a little finicky um, there's some issues with the way that audio goes from uh, the DAW into the tuner so if I drag that vocal take it'll mess with everything it's not going to affect it's not going to drag the audio in here, but if I play it, that's my bad. I'm doing the wrong vocal take there. Uh, this one here. Back to me. You don't gotta act so bad to me. I would never tell you I don't want you. 
So it doesn't, it's still tuning it like it's where it was before, but the audio is in a different spot. So, and if I just go ahead and mute it, it's, this is one of the differences between Waves Tune and Melodyne. This tuner still sees the audio from before, but there's nothing coming down the pipeline for it to actually affect. So it, it's a little bit of a mess. And then um, uh, obviously you have to play the whole song to get all the audio into there. So there's, there's a little finicky. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, over Melodyne or maybe over Waves Tune real time, but Waves Tune, the original, this here, uh, it, it is usually pretty cheap. You can find it on sale. I think I got this for 30 bucks. So as far as getting into a great tuning sound, uh, it's really the best bang for your buck. It just takes a little bit of extra time. So I think I covered everything. If you guys have any questions, if you guys have any issues, if you guys are confused about anything I said, go ahead, let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer those and help you out. Um, hopefully you get this plug in and you have a good time with it.